Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype, traits, and um, even ethnicity calculator results with my own ethnicity calculator of a medieval South Slav from Ryachovets in Bulgaria. Uh, the ID for this sample is I10548. This individual lived in um, 10th or 10th to 12th century. Uh, in the common era, so after the birth of Christ. This individual, in terms of G25, their G25 results resembles most Romanians, uh, Gagauz, which are a Turkic people living in Romania and Bulgarians. And let's go ahead and look at, it's actually a female, so her mitochondrial lineage is U5, Y DNA, she doesn't have it because it's a woman. Let's go ahead and get into her results with my trait predictor. So first thing we're going to look at is ethnic calculator results. That's what we're going to start with. For ethnic calculator results, and the reason I'm starting here is because I made this nice little display, uh, which is just really neat. So with the ethnic calculator results, she is closest to Turkic Caspian Steppe individual DA142, uh, which is kind of surprising. Followed by that is Russians, Slavic uh, mercenaries from Himera, Bell Beakers. Uh, they're aren't really all that many Mediterranean groups showing up here aside from Spanish, which is also at a pretty close distance here. All right, we're going to go ahead and look at her results with Nashakot. Uh, when it comes to phenotype, her phenotype seems to be this. She's got hazel eyes, hazel or light brown eyes, actually. Uh, definitely not blue eyes, probably not dark brown eyes, but it's possible for her to have blue eyes with a neighbor center as well. However, the largest components here the largest percentages she scores are hazel eyes and light brown eyes. That's most likely what she has. For hair color, uh, she most likely, by far, most likely has brown hair. For skin color, she most likely, once again, by far, most likely has light or fair skin. Uh, and for hair texture, she most likely has curly or wavy hair. Um, kinky hair, is in this case, I will say, it, not only is it improbable, it's really improbable because... Uh, for her ethnicity to have kinky hair is really uncommon. Uh, straight hair also is quite improbable based on her genotypes here. Um, let's go ahead and look at what uh, genotypes in the Oka2 and Herc2 region contributed to this result. So she has blue eye haplotype 1. She is heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 2. Uh, she has this genotype which leads to lighter coloring and likely has blue eye haplotype 2 as well. So this genotype is usually predictive of blue eye haplotype 2, but in her case, she's got homozygous derived genotype here. However, heterozygous genotype for BEH2, that happens sometimes, and she does not have blue eye haplotype 3. And what's really interesting is she's also heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 4. That's definitely quite uncommon. Let's go ahead and check her polygenic risk scores. And for the polygenic risk scores, it looks like she's got a significantly below average score for schizophrenia, actually really extremely low score for schizophrenia. Uh, she's got a slightly above average score for type 2 diabetes, three times the average, you know, kind of above average. And it looks like she's got a below average score for Alzheimer's. Now for the cancer section, looks like she's got zero risk variance for breast cancer out of 12, which is really good to see. 11 risk variance for testicular cancer out of 16. That's not good to see. 11 risk variance out of 16 for testicular cancer is definitely extremely uncommon. Um, 4 risk variance for celiac disease out of 10. Once again, extremely uncommon. Uh, really extreme result. We're going to go ahead and look at, uh, at the intric intricacies of this result, find out why she's scoring the way she is. 0 risk variance for GSS. That's good. And 3 risk variance for Crohn's out of 18. That's pretty typical. All right, now let's go ahead and look at her actual monogenic traits. So it looks like for monogenic traits, she's heterozygous for Comts and MAOA's warrior versus warrior genes. So she's intermediate between the warrior and the warrior phenotypes. Uh, she's got two derived no-go learner variants in drg 2 pro phenotype pro variation, which means she's got less dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. Very stereotypically European genotype to have, and it comes together with a certain advantage, which is a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia. There are some disadvantages, but there is more advantages, in my opinion, to this genotype than disadvantages. Uh, she's got CT genotype here, which leads to slightly lower odds of schizophrenia. Once again, in drg 2 this also decreases dopamine due to receptor sites availability. Um, she does not have the allele in TAC1, which is okay, alright. And she's actually got heterozygous genotype here, which is kind of crazy. I don't see it very often. I have this genotype, um, but I don't see it very often in ancient samples or anybody in, 
anybody at all. And she basically has long form 5-HTTL PR and significantly long, uh, lower risk of depression. Really good to see. Most people have short form 5-HTTL PR and slightly higher um, or typical risk of depression. For lactose persistence, it looks like she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. For OXTR, it looks like um, <coughs> heterozygous genotype. So intermediate OXTR expression and intermediate levels of empathy. Uh, for diabetes, it looks like she does not have type 1 diabetes, although she does have this genotype which slightly increases the odds of type 1 diabetes. This is by far the more important genotype. For hemochromatosis, it looks like she is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation. Really good to see. Uh, for Alzheimer's here, we can actually see all the genotypes that contributed to the score, but we don't really care because we saw the score. And... No micro P. Really good to see. I, you know, I can't pronounce it here. Uh, if you're... If you aren't following, just pause the video and like improve the quality. You know how sometimes on YouTube videos they inst they um, uh, just by default they set it to a really low quality and you can't read what's on the screen. So set it to a higher quality and read what's on the screen because I'm not gonna read it. I don't want to get demonetized. Two fat gene variants in FTOs are S99, So higher odds of obesity, stuff like that. One variant for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A, which is very atypical. <coughs> Once again, another atypical genotype. No East Asian EZAR, which is, which is really good to see. All right. And not a carrier for any of the albinism mutations that, were, that she was genotyped for. No risk variants for familiar Mediterranean fever. Good. Uh, in the MTHFR panel, it looks like she's got this genotype, which is kind of extreme uh, and leads to high roads for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. I don't exactly understand what MTHFR gene does, but it does have some implications in health issues. She's got this genotype, once again, an MTHFR, which is a common genotype and leads to slightly higher than average blood pressure. For cancer's panel, we remember that she scored zero risk variance for breast cancer, but a lot of risk variance for testicular cancer. And it looks like for testicular cancer, yeah, indeed, she's got this genotype, which leads to... She's got nothing but genotypes that lead to increased risk of testicular cancer, which is really uh, alarming to look to look at. But I guess the good, um, the good, the upside of this is that she's a woman and she doesn't have testicles, so she'll be fine. For leukemia, she's got this genotype, which leads to a moderately increased risk of acute leukemia. Once again, kind of not good to see. Uh, for celiac disease panel, I don't remember what she had. Oh, she had, uh, I think, five risk variants for that. Hold on, let's check. What did she have for, for celiac disease? Four out of ten. All right, four out of ten. Let's scroll back here. So it looks like this and this, these are these are the four. All right. Uh, and for allergies panel, it looks like she probably does not have any of the food allergies that are mentioned here, but there's, I'm gonna add a lot more variations to this panel, by the way, it's all coming. From Canavan syndrome, there is no risk variance for that, really good. Uh, so pretty much kind of healthy, kind of a healthy person. The only thing that's, uh, that's a little bit, um, Concerning here is the risk variance for testicular cancer, but you know she's um, she's a she's a woman. She doesn't have testicles, so maybe it's not so bad. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching until the end. You can download this file in 2050 format. Um, excuse me for you know coughing a lot. I I'm just it's cold where I'm at right now, uh, and I've been outside the whole day yesterday. And also leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Uh, goodbye.